this season that you're going through right now, this circumstance, this, this, this trial that you are facing right now, he has a plan. Sons and daughters of God, nothing is wasted. Hey friends, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Tatiana, but you can call me Irie. And in today's video, I want to give you guys some real solid proof that you are not just being seen by God, but you are also being heard by him as well. At some point in time as believers, we are all going to get to that stage, especially when we're going through spiritual warfare when we start to believe the lies of the enemy that god is not hearing you god is not seeing you nothing that you're doing is going to work because god has totally abandoned you those are some of the biggest lies that are planted in our minds especially in seasons when we're going through intense spiritual warfare you will literally feel as if you're a nobody you will literally feel like you're not even a blip on God's radar. But I'm here to tell you today that God sees you and he hears you. You are not a nobody. You are, in fact, a somebody. And everything that you have been doing, you have been praying, you have been fasting, you have been being intentional about getting into the presence of God, none of that is being wasted because God is hearing you and he has his eyes on you. Today, we are going to be visiting someone in the Bible who in the most sinful and messiest of circumstances, but proof and had the experience and proves to us today, that's what I want to say, that God sees and he hears us. I pray that you will be encouraged by this word today, that you are not just seen by God, but you are heard by him and that you are loved. I was definitely encouraged by this word. Yes, it, it challenged a lot of things that I believed, but I'm so, so grateful that God gave me this word and I'm so excited to share it with you guys today. If you feel encouraged by today's word, I pray that you will subscribe just because i feel like god is just doing so many amazing things on this platform like i i'm already mind blown and like i know he's not finished yet and with that i just want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you to all my new subscribers Thank you for all the comments. Thank you for liking my videos, especially my last video. I can see that you guys were blessed and all glory goes to God. So if you feel blessed by today's video, definitely go ahead and subscribe. Give this video a big, big like. And of course, share it with someone that you know. All right, guys. So without further ado, let's get into the text. So the story that we're going to be visiting today is one of a woman named Hagar. Hagar is basically an Egyptian slave to this married couple called Sarai, who will later be called Sarah, and Abram, who is later renamed Abraham. In addition to looking at the proof that God sees and hears us through the story of Hagar, I really, really encourage you guys to watch this video to the end because I'm going to be sharing three key things, three key takeaways from this story that we need to pay attention to while we are going through this season of spiritual warfare. All right, so we're going to go to Genesis chapter 16. I'm, I'm going to be reading from verse 1 to basically to the end of the chapter because... I just think that will be a lot more helpful, especially if you're not familiar with the text. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. 
So after Abram had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, son of, sorry, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over, and he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are a God of seeing. For she said, Truly, here I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore the well was called Bear Lairoi. It lies between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. God gave Abram at the time he was 75 years old and God gave him a promise that, listen, you are going to be the father of many nations. Like the sun on the seashore is how, you know, <laughs> it's how vast your offspring will be, like your generation will be. And not only that, but they will come from you. So your generation is not going to be started through any other means of child like having a child it's going to come directly from you no adoption nothing like that like you are going to have a child regardless of your age you know regardless of everything else fast forward it's 25 years later and abraham still has not seen this promise fulfilled from the lord for me whenever the conversation of redemption and God stepping in to really, really fix what we have ruined with our human hands and with our own strength. I often think about the story of Hagar. I also think about how a lot of times, even in unfair situations, experiences that we would have had in our lives that just just seem so like all for nothing things that took place in our story and we wonder like how could this have happened we wonder how did i get here how did i end up in this situation and it could be a mistake that you made it could be you know as a result of someone else's actions or decisions but i believe whatever it is god has a plan and he always has a way of rewriting everything even some of the most permanent things that we thought like this cannot be fixed this this has no way good can come from this like god so miraculously steps in and this is exactly what he did for hagar in this story he saw her 
God had his eyes on Hagar. Like he would have been in her story long before she knew that she was going to become a surrogate to Sarah. Long before she knew that, you know, she would start to feel these feelings of pride towards Sarah or feeling that she's better than Sarah and, you know, having to run away because Sarah's like, oh no, you didn't. I just think that we can all put ourselves in Hagar's story and, you know, realize that at some point, we too, being so unlikely, being so lowly and thinking that, you know, everything that has happened in my life just feels so insignificant. We can put ourselves in the story of Hagar and say, God really sees me, like he really hears me. And there are so many things to unpack in this story. There are so many different things that I could talk about. But the main thing I want you guys to get from today's word is that God has a plan. God has a plan for everything that happens in your life. This season that you're going through right now, this circumstance, this, this, this trial that you are facing right now, he has a plan. Sons and daughters of God, nothing is wasted. No act of faith that you place in your Lord Jesus Christ, no no amount of prayer, no amount of being in God's presence is ever wasted. He sees it all and he is able to turn that pain into a promise. He is able to step in and say, okay, whether it is that you made a mess of the situation or, you know, unfortunately, it was because of someone else's disobedience, someone else's impatience, someone else's lack of belief, like, I am able to turn this around for you and I will. So there are some key things that I want us to take away from this entire story, this whole drama basically the first thing that we have to pay attention to um when we are going through this season of you know trying to believe that god sees and hears us is that we have to keep believing god's promise sarai acted as the catalyst for everything that took place later on in the text we see that it's because of her losing sight of the promise that God gave or even removing herself from the promise that really caused a lot of these things to happen. Next in line to Sarah's unbelief was Abram's unbelief. And so we see that in our unbelief, it really costs others. Even while you're going through everything that you're going through, you have to have faith for the sake of the people around you. And I know for a lot of for a lot of us that sounds really hard and you're like listen i i feel like my my faith is stretching thin but the reality is when you lose faith and when you lack belief in what god has promised you it doesn't just affect you it affects those around you when you start to take matters into your own hands and that is exactly what happened with sarai and hagar it's because of her unbelief why she got the shock of her life to realize that yeah she was really the one that could not bear children the second key thing that i want us to pay attention to in this text is that god wants to transform you in this season he wants to use whatever it is that you're going through to help and change you when hagar ran off into the wilderness because sarai treated her badly I can just imagine how much she would have wanted her situation to change, how much like she felt lost and felt like she she just needed, you know, a fresh start and that her situation needed transformation. But God used that as an opportunity to transform her because the text says that after Hagar realized that, yeah, she got pregnant and you know, she started to look to Sarah with contempt, meaning she started to look down on Sarah. She started to think of herself higher than Sarah. To say that you're able to bear 
children or to bear a child for someone like Abram back in that time was, you know, it was a big deal. And so to Hagar, she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm better than Sarah. Like, look at me. I got pregnant. She can't and all of that. And so God used it as an opportunity to help her with that attitude because we see later on that when she you know runs off into the wilderness the angel of the lord tells her to return to sarah god realized that there was something in her heart in her that needed transformation and god didn't just say okay go back he gave her a promise and he said i am gonna make that child that you're carrying into a great nation i'm gonna make him into the ruler of a great nation so he didn't just send her back and say all right go back and you know go fix your pride problem he sent her back with a promise he sent her back with something to hold on to she received comfort in her heart that god was going to look after her and i just think that's so amazing and the final takeaway i want us to draw from today's um word is that god will fulfill his promises we see later on in the text that god chose to bless hagar even though she wasn't originally supposed to be a part of the plan god still chose to make her a part of that covenant story god still gave her a seat at the table and i think that's just so that's just so amazing and it shows just how much god is kind to us it's just so amazing how hagar experienced the god who sees he, she gave him the name el Roy, god who sees and god gave her the name for her son which means god will hear i just think that was just so amazing and you know when i took a look at that i was like god you are so intentional and i just really really want you guys to believe with all your heart that you are going to be leaving this season with a promise with a promise fulfilled or if the promise is ongoing, you are going to leave this season with that promise. So I pray that you will keep believing. I pray that you will let God transform you in this season. And I pray that your mind will just be blown at how God is going to be fulfilling his promises. God bless you guys and I will see you all in my next video. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share today's word. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.